Now, it's a topic that has recently gained national attention here, bullying in the NFL. Now, earlier this week, Richie Incognito, a guard for the Miami Dolphins, was suspended indefinitely for allegedly bullying and hazing his teammate, Jonathan Martin. Now, ProFootballTalk.com is reporting that the Dolphins' general manager was aware of the bullying and told Martin he should punch Incognito. As the NFL continues to look into the allegations, we brought former Detroit to, uh, Lion here, uh, Ty Halleck, to, to give us an inside perspective on what really goes on in the league here. So this is something that I think people are a little bit surprised by because these are some of the biggest guys in the country, the strongest guys in the country, and they're suffering from bullying too. But you're saying this is just something that goes on all the time there. Well, I, I think it goes on all the time, but again, I think there's lines. And, 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 yeah. and, and in some instances, what you're seeing so far um, some of those lines have been crossed. However, in the dynamic of a, of a professional locker room, I don't think that's where we want to spend a lot of time in terms of sending out a national me message about bullying or communication because politically correctness is not in the locker room. There's a lot of crazy things. I mean, I could tell you story after story after story, and even being connected with guys that are still there, personnel people, etc. the locker room's alive and well in terms of a lot of jo more jovial uh, but you know, putting down and getting after guys, and, and and ultimately trying to get these 300 pound guys to be physical and and get angry because that's what they that's what they're asked to do on Sundays. What, when you were with the Lions, did you see this sort of thing go on in the locker room there too? Then yeah, a lot of you know we were talking just a second ago. I mean, some of the rookie paying for things. I mean, I yeah. paid a, a pretty good tab on something, I, I, and then and again, it was kind of a pay it forward thought process. But again, when you start getting into some you know the the racially uh, uh, you know, talk and some of that yeah. stuff. That stuff went on all the time, but it was done in a, in a very different way. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, it, but you have to take each individual, I don't care if it's the National Football League, if it's Wood TV, it doesn't matter where it is. You, you have to look at this in terms of how, how do those people really react to what it is you're doing? And obviously Jonathan Martin had an issue with it. Yeah, I, I mean, clearly he, he did, and he, by walking off the team, essentially. Um, but most people don't do that. They just endure it. Yeah, well, and, and again, I, I don't, but that doesn't mean that's right. I mean, if yeah. Richie Cogni Incognito took this to, to that level, I'm not by my no way, shape, or form saying it's right. It's just in the in the locker room, it is yeah. it's dictatorial from the top down in the in the administrations. It's Darwinistic mm -hmm. from players' perspective, and, and and it's mostly physical. I mean, physically, these well, guys are trying to do things. This that is a are, whole different dynamic right, that goes exactly. on inside that that locker room. Yeah. Very different. I mean, it, it, this may happen to some respect in the workplace for other people, but this is very different in the locker room. But I guess the question here is, when does it start? If I'm a parent who has a, a kid who's playing football or soccer or swimming or something to that effect. Effect. How far does this start down the line and how bad is it? Well, I, I don't know how bad it is. I just know that in athletics, there's a lot of this that goes on within the team environment. People are trying to feel their yeah. spot. There's a, a lot of pressure for people to, to do well. I think it goes down as low as, you know, nine-year-old soccer. I mean, it's, th 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 there's, there's some of this jovialness. But then at some point, when it gets mean-spirited or goes beyond a line, mm -hmm. I think it needs to be addressed. And I think the Miami Dolphins need to address it. So does the National Football League. Throughout your entire career, did you ever feel endangered by it? Or was it just something you realized was, was just good fun kind of stuff? Well, I mean, there, there's a definite difference. I mean, I could tell you some stories that would probably, you know, make people, you know, chagrin as well. But yeah. there were times, yeah, where you felt very uncomfortable. You weren't quite sure about the dynamic or socially kind of how this was going to transpire outside of the locker room. But again, um, you know, it's it's you have to deal with it. You got to be tough. You got to get after it. I, the only thing I would say is it, it, it does amaze me right now that everyone in Miami uh, th th that's left there yeah. is is really solidifying that. Look, Jonathan Martin, you should have came forward, and we, we, I think they wanted the opportunity to say, okay, yes, we've crossed that line, and let's settle it in house. Yep. And, and that's a very typical response too. But nonetheless, what's been done wrong? I think if we can learn something from this, and if we can get help. Uh, across the board to, to send the right message that, that you know s some of this when you do cross those lines yeah. is not right and you need to under know and understand that I think would be, it would be helpful for everybody. Yeah, certainly something we need to look at and a little bit surprising is going on in the NFL but now we talk about it it seems very you would kind of almost expect some of these things to be happening there but we certainly do appreciate you coming in here to talk about this this morning Ty. Thank you again. You bet.